Welcome back to the channel today, my friends. Today, we're working on something a little bit different at the FRC Garage, or Fixed Roof Coop channel, I guess you could say. A little bit out of my element. A little bit out of my element. Today, I'm working on a 2010 Mercedes-Benz. What is this thing? I don't even know. There's so many different classes. This is a E550 rear-wheel drive coupe with the V8. Front strut is blown out, and I'm going to go get it uh, fixed. Well, not get it fixed. My neighbor, who does, like, all auto detailing, he's a guy that, like, details my Corvette and, like, all my friends' cars and all my family's cars. Uh, he's like, hey, my strut's blown out, blah, blah, blah. This place wants stupid money to work on it because it's a Mercedes. And I was like, ah, I get the strut, dude. I'll just change it. Like, I'm, how hard can it be? It's not hard. It's very weird. It's a different setup than... I'm used to swapping, but it's not a complete strut. You pay like 800 bucks legit just for a Blistine strut, and it, the spring is on the old one, and everywhere around here doesn't have the whole complete strut kit, and I don't have a spring compressor. Why? I don't know. That's just a tool that I have yet to buy, but I'm feeling lazy today, and I really don't want to go rent one and almost blow myself up because we all know how dangerous those damn things are. So, if you remember and you watched my videos probably a year ago now, eh, maybe, my friend Ryan did the front end on this car. He, a uh, mechanic, he does, you know, side jobs at his house when he works at a, sh a shop during the day, during the week. Well, congratulations to him. He just purchased his boss's shop. He bought the shop. So he is now a shop owner with a beautiful garage. So I called him and said, hey. I want to come see your garage, first of all. And second of all, can you change a strut spring for me? He's like, ah, bring it on over. We'll take care of it. So we got my parents' spare car, a little gas sipper. We're going to load Ralph up. And we are going to go check out Ryan's shop as well as get that spring swapped over. And then maybe if he'll give me a little, do a little tour, maybe meet him. I don't know if he's going to be up for that, but let's go. In route, a little Ford Focus action, 2006, with a 2.0 liter four cylinder that makes more noise than anything. It's been ticking and tacking for like 50,000 miles now, but it just goes. My mom's like, hey, do you think we can get that fixed? I'm like, yo, we ain't touching this thing. When it blows up, I'll put a junkyard motor in it, call it a day. Look at this guy. We'll see seven action. Guy always parks it here at the bar. Beautiful car. First time here, country automotive. Ryan does not want to be in the video, as I thought, but nice little shop he's got going on here. All right, so Ryan does not want to be in the video, but he's probably gonna kill me for being here, but he's got four two post lifts in the shop. That's his truck up on the lift now. Good spot he got. Very happy for him. Congratulations to him. Um, we are in West Hampton, Massachusetts. So if it's one of those things where you are in the Western Mass area and you need a reputable good guy, I'll put his uh, contact info in the link in the description as well as I'll throw a picture of his card up. It's the end of the day for him, so place is emptied out. Got everything out of the road, but we're here getting that strut taken care of. Hit them up. We are back out here with the T today. The Mercedes is out of the garage. We got hit with a ton of weather. So I got the T in here. We got the 51 in here. And we got the Weiss Daily Driver. She took my shitbox truck to work today. So check this out. I finally finished up the seats completely. I know I kind of made the last video where I kind of like showed you how to make them. But what I did was is I put box tubing. You can see where I tack welded it on the bottom and I heated it up and smashed it around. And then I did inch and a half box tubing there to kind of tilt the seat back to get me the right angle. Otherwise, if you leave them straight and flat, you're kind of like leaning hunched forward. So I leaned them back an inch and a half. It's a lot more comfortable. As far as the steering, I ground off that exhaust clamp that was holding the top port because where I want the seat actually and where this was, it was actually 
over. So it was like that way. So I cut that off. I'm going to put a new one in plus that little square that I did. It's not going to work with the dash. I'm going to make a new mount for that. Uh, I got some exhaust clamps right there. So we'll figure something out shortly. I built structural cross members to where the seat's going to go and just give it a little bit more strength as the floor. I was going to do it quarter inch, uh, like, uh, not quarter inch, but one inch angle iron. But I decided I got a shit ton of box tubing, so whatever. It's going to add a little bit of weight to it, but not that big of a deal. So essentially where the back parts in the corner there is going to catch somewhere in here. So we'll drill straight through, mount the seat there. And same thing, the front part will catch in here somewhere. So what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to dummy that on that side. And the seats will be in place where they're going to be. I've been doing a whole ton of different things as far as trying to figure out what I'm going to run for a gas tank, what I'm going to run for exhaust, what I'm going to run, how I'm going to run my pedals. I have all my brake pedals and my clutch pedal, which is right there, ready to go. It's going to be, I think, a floor mount. It should be enough room for me to shift and everything, even with the steering wheel where it is here. So after I get that made and kind of the seats where they're going to be, that way I know, I mean, that back hump there it limits where the seat's going to be. So I was like, oh, I'll put sliders on it. At that, it, it, It's really not even worth it because I'm crunched in here to drive this car. If Grace drives this car, she's not going to be crunched. So I'm like almost six foot tall. She's like five foot half inch. So if we leave it the way it is, with the seat not moving, it's, it's not going to make a difference. And I mean, I only paid $5 each for those sliding parts of the seat. So... Who knows, when we put buckets in the 51 or something, maybe we'll, we'll use them for that. But we'll part pile them on the shelf, just keep moving forward with that. Uh, let's see. I think I, I don't know if I showed you, but the steering. Yes, I did. I, I showed you the install of that box, but the steering actually works legitimately now. The only downfall is, is if I turn hard left, the steering rod hits the tire. I mean, I might be able to change that with an offset of a wheel, but I was also thinking where the steering is right here, I think I might just put like a bump stop right here, you know, figure out where I want it to go, where it's going to max out once I get my ride tires on here to where I have, you know, movement for the suspension so it doesn't hit that rod. And then I'll put a bump stop, maybe like a nut and bolt or something like a piece of angle iron or triangle down here, with an adjustable bolt and everything so it stops and hits this, so it stops it from turning. Because, I mean, when this thing is fully turned, it's like you're drifting. The tires are literally, I mean, they're almost like folding on each other like that. So I think I can put a little bit of restriction to it, and it'll make sure that I don't bend that steering rod for the traditional steering. And, yes, Travis was talking a little bit of crap. He's like, ooh, you got a tractor? Because I sent him a video of the steering, and I had this on here like this. I mean, I'm not opposed to it, but I do have something coming for this car. And I originally had talked about in a few videos back, this is probably a month or two ago, I have a cam for the 350 for this. I'm not even going to cam it. I'm literally going to leave it bone stock the way Trav gave me that motor. And I'm going to bolt those crappy 76cc cylinder heads back onto it so it's 8.5 to 1 compression. Because low compression means one thing. You guys figure it out. But that's the, a, a little secret, a little preview of what's coming. What's coming. Anyways. But in the meantime... We're just gonna keep plucking away at uh, plucking away at making the other seat mount, and then I bought some long bolts to bolt them damn things down, so we can start going as as far as making the rest of the cross members. So essentially, I know I'm probably talking in circles, but I want to dummy this onto that side, and then I need to come make a transmission tunnel, which is just gonna be straight tubing across, and then I'm gonna go up and over, and then cut it out for the drive shaft to go. But as far as here, where the shifter is and stuff, I'm probably just gonna like come straight, put a slight bend, and then just follow the tranny, and then come over this way. So that'll be my floor kicker here. Maybe put one support in the middle, and that's it, like where it catches the frame here. And then figure out where I'm gonna mount my brakes, which I think my clutch pedals mount is gonna be somewhere where my hand is. It's almost like a, a flat plate with a, almost like an angle iron almost. And then same thing for here for the clutch pedal, or the brake pedal. And then my master cylinder will be here and here as far as for the brakes and clutch. And then my clutch is going to be hydraulic for the Saginaw. So I'm just going to run the the, uh, the braided line 
literally over through the floor and right in here to a hydraulic throw out. So very simple with that. And then I have my frame right here, my frame rail here to plumb my brake lines to. So I'll be able to run all those down. I mean, I might run them over and on this side somehow because my exhaust is gonna be here, but we'll figure that out when the time comes. I have these seats finally mounted in place. I ended up changing my entire idea of how I was gonna mount them. I was gonna mount them just straight through here and bolt it through, but I'm like, last second, I'll just make tabs. So it looks, makes it a lot easier. I did, however, bolt the back portion straight through the cross members uh, because I didn't plan ahead. I should have made the squares in there bigger so I could have put tabs around the back there, but I didn't, it works for now. They look good. I think I'm just gonna leave them the way they are, honestly. Uh, I'll just clean them out with some water real quick, and then I think I'm just gonna clear coat them. I like them crappy looking like that. Uh, steering wheel, I had to cut off the mount, I said earlier in the video, and reposition it. Um, this now is where it needs to be, and the steering actually works like it's supposed to. So, pretty excited about that. We're getting there, short steps, baby steps. The only thing I'm noticing, I have this wheel, this Joe's Racing, this was actually in the 51. I had purchased a smaller wooden wheel, classic vintage one on eBay, and Grace liked it so much, she's like, I want it in that car, so of course. You listen to the wife, right? Especially because she lets me do what the hell I want, so we put that in her car for her. So now I gotta figure out a different steering wheel. This one is a big one. It's like 14, hang on, let me see. This wheel is roughly about 15 inches across. The wooden, the wooden wheel that I had bought for that was only a 13 inch. So I'm thinking, uh, I really, really, I'm a huge fan of moon equipped stuff and I always see the moon eyes, but I've never owned anything that's moon. So maybe, something that's like nice and new for this car. Maybe I'll buy a brand new moon equipped steering wheel. I don't know, they have those cool sparkly ones like sparkly purple or green or something. But that's besides the point. Steering column's in, I just gotta finish welding it. It's kinda tack welded now just in case I gotta move it again. Uh, the seats are in permanently now. I can start building my floor as well as getting my pedal set up. So my brake pedal is gonna go right about here and then my clutch pedal, like I said, Oops, clutch pedal goes somewhere like in this area here, like so. You get that. So what I think I'm gonna do is is I can get this kind of back to this, the triangle part to the body there. I might actually cut that out with a hole saw or cut it out with a grinder and kind of make some room to really get this pedal back in there. Or there's also the option of flipping this thing upside down and maybe I'll, I'll put it this way. I'm not sh too sure yet. Uh, one thing I kind of wish I did is I wish I did get a, a tilt steering column because I'd be able to almost come straight up with it and then tilt it down because I like to drive with my wheel like down. But essentially, I mean, it has a quick disconnect here, so I'll be able to get in and out, maybe not, <laughs> of the car relatively easily. So, I mean, if my pedals are here, that's why I want to get a, kind of a smaller steering wheel. Um, give me a couple inches here. You know, if this is 15, maybe if I got a 12 inch wheel, I'd lose an inch and a half. So I'd lose roughly that much there. It gives me a little bit more leg room, but essentially, I mean, my brakes are here. My gas will be here. Uh, so yeah, we should be good as far as room. And if push comes to shove, if I got to do something with the column, I definitely still can, but that's enough, uh, mumbling for me for today. So kind of all over the place with this video. I know I sh started with the seats and showed you how I made them originally, but now they're kind of legit done. So uh, thanks for watching. Like, comment, and subscribe. Sorry I uh, didn't make a video list past week. I was a little busy with some personal stuff going on, uh, but I'm back and hopefully keep going with content. So we'll see you soon. Later.